While COVID-19 has had some serious delays and a sour budget, the California High Speed Rail project began in 2015 and will be completed in 2029. A high speed rail project in California has cost more than double its original price at $105 billion. Eight of the state's 10 largest cities will be connected by high speed trains from San Diego to San Francisco. In phase one of the project, Los Angeles and San Francisco will be connected, while in phase two, San Diego and Sacramento will be connected. Each 200 miles per hour train will be entirely electric and run on renewable energy, which demonstrates the West Coast state's commitment to sustainability. In the US, rail projects are almost synonymous with high costs, particularly in California. The Eno Center report states the healthcare and pension costs are incorporated into direct capital costs. The government pays for nationalized healthcare and pension plans through general taxes, not employers in some other countries. Another factor driving up project costs in California is the high methane zones in the underground environment around Los Angeles. In addition to higher costs, U.S. rail projects take longer to build. The construction of U.S. projects with minimal tunneling takes about six months longer than of similar non-U.S. projects. A major transit construction project requires support from local jurisdictions. The ability to acquire land is necessary, the ability to secure local permits to close streets and relocate utilities, and the flexibility to hire top talent to lead the project, because US public transit agencies rarely have the structure, authority, or experience to execute it. In the United States, many projects constructed below grade have similar costs to those built at grade. The 9.3 mile long metro line in Toulouse, France, was built entirely underground for about $176 million per mile, while Houston's Metro 3.2 mile long green line is built at grade for about $223 million per mile. Investing in early underground exploration and strengthening the design review process with standardized checklists could reduce the number of change orders significantly. It can take commuters more than five or six hours to drive from Los Angeles to San Francisco, a distance of nearly 500 miles. The new high-speed bullet train is a once-in-a-generation project that'll cut that time in half. It's still unclear when the project will be completed. The country's first bullet train lines were constructed with $10 billion in bonds approved in 2008. 200 miles per hour will be the speed of the trains. Connecting two of the country's most populous regions, the new train network will be a boon for the state. This will be a much needed alternative to congested highways and airports as climate change becomes more pressing. The project will cover 500 miles across the Central Valley and eventually connect Anaheim, San Diego and Sacramento. The project is billed as the state's largest infrastructure investment. Although critics have called it a major boondoggle, it's popular among voters as an alternative to clogged highways. Assembly Democrats have yet to approve $4.2 billion in project appropriations requested by Governor Gavin Newsom a year ago. By 2029, 520 miles of rail track were to be completed. It's anticipated that the first segment of the Bakersfield-Merced line will be operational by 2030 according to the High Speed Rail Authority overseeing the project. A project of this size cannot be ruled out from experiencing further delays. Initially, the line will serve six million people from three major cities in the Central Valley and three major universities. Over a billion dollars in federal funds that were cut by the Trump administration have been reinstated by the Biden administration. Expenditures are a top concern, especially since the state makes strong efforts to oversee compliance. Segment by segment, the construction team plans to complete the project. About 300 miles of the project have already been approved, with more segments to follow. It's been criticized many times, but remains popular and is having a significant impact on joblessness in California's Central Valley. The project has created over 7,000 jobs. A gargantuan project has also benefited hundreds of small businesses in the region. In 2008, voters approved nearly $10 billion in bond money for the project, when its total cost was estimated at $40 billion. Despite delays and struggles to obtain the necessary land, costs have continued to rise. Construction has begun, but the track has not yet been laid. 
Brian Kelly, Chief Executive Officer, said Tuesday that a fresh federal injection of cash puts the project on a stronger footing. As a result of the Federal Infrastructure Bill Congress passed last year, California should be able to complete for up to $6 billion in grant money. California won roughly $3 billion for the project during the Obama administration, but former Republican President Donald Trump revoked about $1 billion. The Biden administration has returned it. Kelly said receiving billions more in federal funds would enable the project's first operational track to be double track rather than single track, and would help it move forward on design and other work. Despite these challenges, the project remains on track. Last year, the state legislature refused to release the remaining $4.2 billion from the voter-approved bond fund for the project as requested by Governor Gavin Newsom. As a result of skepticism around the project's overall approach and lack of sustained funding, Democratic leaders in the state assembly have been reluctant to release the money. In his January budget proposal, Newsom proposed releasing the money again. A request for comment about the negotiations was not immediately responded to by his spokespeople. It appears that California's bullet train has finally received the funding and legal approval needed to complete its first leg. It remains unclear how the 171-mile route will connect Los Angeles, San Francisco, and San Jose, and how its designers will overcome California's mountainous terrain and seismic risks. The state legislature approved the release of $4.2 billion for the first phase of the train between mid-sized cities Bakersfield, Frenso, and Merced in June 2022. There are also more than $2 billion in federal bipartisan infrastructure law funds set aside for passenger rail projects. If the train was extended to the San Francisco Bay Area and Los Angeles, it would have 500 miles of track and a price tag of $105 billion. When California voters approved a $10 billion bond measure in 2008 to help build it, the initial estimate was about $40 billion. After early management blunders threatened public support, the state hired Kelly, a veteran transportation official. It was also important to secure all the land needed to build even the first relatively flat phase of the project. There are currently 119 miles of concrete, bridge-like viaducts, and other structures under construction that'll someday allow electric trains to travel at over 200 miles per hour, causing temporary headaches in downtown Frenzo. Work on the remaining 52 miles will begin soon. To keep construction on track, Kelly and his team have also secured more than 90% of the land needed. Thousands of workers are employed in the most innovative and transformative project our nation has ever seen in almost 75 years, according to Karen Philbrick, Executive Director of the Minota Transportation Institute at San Jose State University. There's a great deal of significance in the legislative support for electrifying the HSR segment between Merced and Bakersfield. Critics see a boondoggle where Philbrick sees an opportunity. A California attorney who sued to block funding for the train's first phase, arguing it violated the state's constitution, said the project is a waste of money. He said his clients don't feel it's ever going to result in a viable, high-speed rail line. Late last year, California's Court of Appeals ruled against Flashman, allowing construction to proceed. For now, the train is stable due to that victory and recent funding developments. There is a possibility that the first trains will be ordered as early as next year. Amtrak contracts for Siemens and Alstom, both of which build passenger trains at East Coast facilities, will likely lead to competition for California. There's several other train manufacturers from around Asia and the world building high-speed trains, Kelly said. There are plenty of suppliers. For at least another year, construction work in Frenso will clog downtown streets and cause headaches for its nearly 530,000 residents. Frenso's population has grown as a result of its relatively affordable housing and cost of living, which attract Californians who are able to work remotely. Especially if it links Los Angeles and San Francisco, high-speed rail will enhance its appeal.